Luminar AI is an incredibly powerful new photo editing software for Mac and Windows, and it's also one of the easiest and most fun you'll ever use. However, it does have its quirks, which I'll be talking about later in this Luminar AI review. You see, Luminar AI definitely isn't for everyone. Now, I'm not sponsored by Skylum, the guys behind Luminar AI, and that means I can say whatever I want about the software. And trust me, I'll be telling you exactly what I don't like about it and exactly what you need to know about before you go out and buy it. So why should you listen to me anyway? Well, I've been a professional photographer since 2014, and I also run a website called ShotKit, where I review camera gear and photo editing software just like this one. So I do like to think I know what I'm talking about. Now this Luminar AI review is split up into four main parts. The first are use cases, then pros, cons, and my recommendations. And I think you will find the use cases especially helpful so you can see exactly why you might need this software and how it could make your life easier. But feel free to skip around using the timestamps in the description below. All right, let's get stuck into the review. All right, so first use case, let's start with the headline feature of Luminar AI, and that is, of course, the replace sky feature. Now, I'm gonna import the images into the software. I'm gonna actually import an entire folder of raw images that were taken in Japan, and you'll see how quickly they get pulled in there. That's almost a gigabyte's worth of raw image files. Now, as I was saying before, the use case here in particular is to replace a sky in a scene because I took this drone photo in Tokyo and it was, although it was at sunset, the sky is a little bit lackluster and it wasn't the one that I was hoping for. And as you know, there's it's not always possible to get the exact scene or the exact time of day or the exact sky in this case that you want when you take a photo, particularly with something like a drone shot where it takes a, you know, a little bit of planning beforehand and you've only got seconds before the batteries run out, etc., etc. So I came back with this photo so, and while I like the actual composition of the scene and the skyline and the buildings in the foreground, I wasn't so happy with how the sky turned out. So this use case in particular, it's perfect for the re sky replacement feature. So if I go up to templates at the top here, you'll see that straight away Luminar AI has identified the templates that it thinks are perfect for this photo. And I've used this before and I know that artistic is the set of templates that I like when it comes to landscape. But as you can see, you can select from a few here. And Luminar AI has got all these other templates that you can apply to the images, but they are not deemed relevant in this case. Obviously, for example, portrait, there's no photo of a person here. So the artificial intelligence has said that that's probably not appropriate for you. So if we go into artistic and start applying these looks to the image, you'll see that you might be reminded that um, you might be reminded of a preset from whatever software that you're using at the moment. And I'd like to say that this is, these are actually different. They're completely different from presets. What Luminar AI is doing here is using a database of millions of photos that have been fed into the software software by their engineers to create like a different edit per photo. So it will look at the image and it will analyze the contents and then provide an edit based on that. So whereas a preset provides edits that are exactly the same, uh, no matter what the contents of the photos are, the templates in Luminar AI are just according to the contents, which I find pretty phenomenal. But if we just click around, wow, well, that's uh, that's kind of a bit too intense for my liking. As, as I was saying, we just click around trying to find something that looks good. This is just the initial look and mood and feel of the photo. Um, I really like the, the Supreme. Um, it's giving it like a very matte uh, finish, even though there's still lots of vibrance in the sky and the saturations there. And it's also brought up the shadows and completely relit the scene here. If we just do a quick before after so you can see that. Um, if it was too intense for my liking, I'd just come down to here and back off on the slider a bit. And as you can see here, I've already marked it off as a favorite by clicking that heart button. So when I come up here, it's already there for me. All right, so after a few seconds, we are actually where I want to be with the final edit in terms of the look and the colors and everything. But let's just see for the sake of argument what can be done with the sky replacement feature. So going up to the edit panel here and we scroll down to the creative section and click on sky. Now, Luminar AI, 
Sky, since the latest update, they've made it really easy for you to check, choose what Sky you want because they all appear as thumbnails. Previously, it was just the words um, describing the Sky, which was really clunky and I didn't like it at all. But now you can actually click here and filter. So I'm just going to go into dramatic sunset and you just click around and you'll see in the top left here, this is showing the loading, that animation. Uh, so it takes a few seconds to apply depending on your computer. But if you just click around, some of Oh, well, it looks like once you've applied one, the others become really quick to apply, which is nice. So some of them will look, it's all based on taste really, some of them will look realistic to you while others like this one really doesn't to me. Um, that one doesn't either. I kind of like the look of this one I think the best. And if you zoom in here just to see some of the detail, if I just do a before after split screen, you can see all that detail on the skyline there has been filled in perfectly by this software. If we just go backwards and forwards over these buildings, you can see how it's actually relit them. And even these cranes in the distance there, the whatever that is, the pylon, you can see how even that tiny detail around there has just been filled in perfectly like trying to do this something like this in Photoshop would take a long time and a lot of experience it's not something that I'd like to do so that's taken a few seconds I'm just gonna zoom back out and remove that and the final thing that I need to do because this was a stitched shot you can see around the outside I need to do some cropping so we go out of the sky panel here and move to the top into composition and choose the ratio for first I want this to be used as a Facebook cover photo so I go down to Facebook cover and the dimensions change there to suit Facebook and then I'll just drag in these handles to crop the image so that there's no black area in the photo and then I'll just hit return uh, wait a second for it to do its thing and there we go that's the final image so I'll just do another quick before and an after before after pretty phenomenal really I'm going to zoom in quickly just to show you some more of the detail there and how everything's being relit. It's a bit fuzzy until it loads. There we go. It's such a huge file, by the way, this one, because it's a stitched panorama. Um, and then we go to export, click on save to disk, and we're done. <laughs> All right, while we're on sky replacement, I wanted to show you something really quickly. This is one of the newer features to Luminar AI, so I really should mention it. It's really something quite incredible, and that's adding in the sky, but reflecting it off any reflective surface in the scene. So as you can see here, you've got the reflection here of the sky in the water. This is the original shot. Now, if we go to the edit panel and go into tools and sky, once I start adding in a sky here, I'll choose something with lots of clouds just so that you can see what's going on. Let me just choose one like this. Um, you'll see that the clouds have been reflected in the, the water. So if we just do a quick before after, it's taking into account anything on top of the water. So in this case, the movement of the, the ripples here, the boat, and it's ignoring those or just doing stuff realistically to make it look like the reflection is actually real. And um, that's really quite amazing. So I'm just going to try this with a different one and show you that it's also relighting the entire scene based on that color of the sunset. So if we just do a quick before after, after and just note the water and the colors and tones that have been reflected in there that's really pretty amazing so if we just zoom in and show you a nice close-up there and you'll see that that is that has been done perfectly at least to my eye that kind of edit in Photoshop I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's impossible but it is bloody difficult to be able to do that in this kind of fashion I'm gonna just hop back out of here and just try it with one other photo just to show you that that wasn't a fluke so we've got the mountains here reflected in the water this is the original photo let's go to edit sky selection and just choose something a bit wacky this time just for the hell of it night star night star shot and give your eyes a couple of seconds to adjust and believe that this photo could be real and I think you could fool people with it they just think bloody hell that's an amazing photo as you can see here the shooting star has been reflected there and the uh, interstellarness has been reflected there from there if we do a before and after that is pretty phenomenal 
All right, so moving on to the next use case, and this is what I'm going to call the fun portrait edit. Now, this is for things like um, creating a fun image for your profile picture for social media, if you want to do something like that. And it just so happens that that's exactly what my wife wanted. So I'm going to stay in the same folder as before these images from Japan and I'm just going to choose this one now um, very quickly I'll tell you that this was taken by our three-year-old at the time you can see him reflected in there Harry's taking a great photo of Alyssa bending down and looking over him and as you can see there's a bit of work that would need to be done to this the exposure is wrong the colors are a little bit off um, her face is in the shade but I'm just going to leave it to Luminar AI and we're going to try and edit this as quickly as possible and try and come out with something fun that she can use as a profile picture on social media. So straight away we go into templates and Luminar AI has identified that there is a person in the photo so it's chosen these templates for me to use. Um, there's experimental, monochrome as you saw before, essence and cinematic bespoke. Now as I said before I want something fun so I'm going to click on experimental and start clicking around on these just to see what they do. That's pretty cool. Burn film celebrate cold frame color ramp oh i like that glow that's kind of cute too feather light oh i like that one okay so i'm going to stick on feather light i'm not going to reduce the opacity because i want it to be quite punchy and then go to the edit panel and at this stage you might be happy with this. I actually think it looks pretty cool as it is, but just uh, to show you what else is capable of, this is capable of, I'm just gonna go down into Portrait and Face AI, and there's a great feature here called Face Light. So because her face was in the shade, she's wearing this hat and she's bending forwards, um, her face is in the shade, so by sliding this I'll go all the way up so you can see what's happening it's just identified the face and it's increasing the shadows so that it's lighter so it's adding face light basically and if we just do a quick before after of the whole photo you can see the edits there and I, I quite like that so it's just bringing your eye more to her face because it's the lightest thing in the frame or it is lighter than the stuff that's surrounding it I should say and um, just for a bit of fun here look there's slim face and gonna go to the max maximum here see what that does <laughs> uh, that's pretty impressive how even though she's wearing sunglasses it's managed to kind of not distort anything that's pretty phenomenal if I put it like that it no longer looks like her I don't think she's going to be happy with that let's do it before and after so I'm just going to keep that as it was um, but yeah you can go crazy with this obviously the eyes are you can't see the eyes there so we're not going to make any edits there but you can do things to the skin you can um, enhance her lips do things to the teeth but at that stage I think um, that's more for portrait retouching we won't go into that but that's the final edit so I would just go to save to disk and then there we go Alyssa would be happy with her new fun portrait picture so let's do a before and after all right so for the next really useful real world use case scenario that I've identified I'm going to call it the group photo batch edit now this is really useful for me as a professional wedding photographer but I can see it also useful for anyone who takes photos of perhaps their family members or just of groups in general now these are five raw images that are completely unedited taken at a recent wedding now sometimes I will pull in images from Lightroom using the plugin which I'll show you later into Luminar AI after I've edited them but in this case I haven't done anything to them just so that you can see what it, this is capable of so if we open one of them you'll see that um, there's a lot not wrong with this image but it's just the stuff that needs to be done to it so the first thing that I would do is go to edit and now there's this magical tool up here called enhance AI now don't ask me what it does all I know is when I slide it things happen to the image and it looks instantly better and also you can crank it all the way up to 100 in some cases and it's actually perfect so if I just do it before after it's just done so much to the image I can't really put it in words but it's made it look a lot better and it's done things intelligently so it's enhanced the exposure obviously from dark to light but it's done it in the areas that need it so you can see on the faces the exposure hasn't actually changed that much whereas around it um, you'll see that the shadows have been lifted etc anyway so that's the first step that I would do that would take a couple of seconds and then the next thing and this relates more to the actual usage case 
uh, in the group situation, I'd go down to the portrait section onto face and then face light. Now, as this was shot underneath a tree, there wasn't that much light going onto their faces. It's actually the same as on their bodies. So if you want the eye to go straight to the girl's faces, which is what you'd want to happen, then you'd need to light their faces. Now, doing this in Lightroom would mean I'd need to use a local adjustment brush and just paint in over the faces, being very careful not to touch the hair or the background. And if I made a mistake, I'd ch change that and I'd have to erase it. In short, it would take a while. Just for this one photo, I'm assuming it would take me about five minutes. And then, of course, you've got other photos where the girls have moved and I'd have to redo it, so it'd add up to a lot of time. Now, I would just go into Lumen AI and do what I'm about to show you. So AI in the software has identified what are the faces. I'm just going to crank this up to 100 so you can see what's going on here. And it's just lighting the face. So that's all I needed done to this picture. I'm just going to drag it to where I think looks realistic and your eyes going straight to their faces. If I do a quick before, after, and then you'll see just the power of this tool within a few seconds. That's all I'm going to do to this image. Now stick with me because this is where it becomes really impressive. If I were to press the Control C, hold down Control C or Command C on a Mac, the copy command, um, I can copy all of these settings as you would be able to do in Lightroom. If I were to go and paste these in Lightroom, then it would base that off the position of these people in the image. So it would be pasting my local adjustments onto the image essentially in the wrong places. With Luminar AI, I'm going to hit Control or Command V and you'll see what it ha does. It's identified again where the faces are, relit them perfectly, done all the other edits based on the actual photo, not based on the previous one. And then I can go on to the next one here, click Control or Command V and it's done the same thing. Even though this girl's looking in a different direction, we'll just do a quick before after, it's relighting her face and it's just balancing the lighting perfectly despite the fact that everyone's changed change position. Um, it knows somehow, I don't know how, that this girl is looking in a different direction so the lighting will have changed between that photo and this photo where she's looking at the front and it's just balanced it all naturally. Uh, we can go on to the next photo, I'm just going to paste that on again, give it a second to catch up and there we go and then the final photo where they're all in different positions once again, click paste. And there we go, as if by magic everything's been done for me. So just a quick before after, I can use the slider to show you how much the faces have been lit and how much has been done to the whole scene. But this is a massive time saver and of course it will work with other people um, and we can paste the settings onto there and it will balance everything. Let's do a quick before after. So as you can see, this is a huge time saver and it's something that I think is worth the price of the software alone. All right, so the next real world use case scenario that is incredibly useful for me in a very small percentage of cases, and that is something called the body adjustment feature. Now, as I said before, I'm a professional wedding photographer. I can see this very useful also for portrait photographers, or just even if you're not a professional, just if you're taking a photo of yourself or of other friends and they want stuff done to their body. I'm just using this example of a bride. I should say that this bride didn't ask me to do anything to her body whatsoever she was happy with this photo but I'm just using it as an example to show you what Luminar AI is capable of obviously she's not looking straight on square onto the camera she's got her shoulder pointing toward us her arm pointing towards us and she's to the side so it's going to really test the artificial intelligence so that we can see if we can make adjustments to her body as easily as they advertise so if we go up here to edit and then I've already got it highlighted under portrait the body AI feature now if we drag the shape slider to to the right you'll see the body of the girl getting thinner her arm getting thinner and the background around her warping so it's realistic uh, if I just back that off again you'll see and then we can go the other way and it adds pounds to her body um, if we just leave it around there and then I turn on the before and after you'll see what's happening here everything's kind of changed position very subtly to make it realistic and if we put this before after 
draggable, um, whatever it's called, over it, you'll see what's going on here. Um, the body has moved in line with those adjustments and everything else around it has been adjusted realistically. Again, doing something like this in Photoshop would involve the use of the liquify tool, which is essentially dragging areas around and inside of the object that you're trying to adjust. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of practice and experience in it doesn't yield the best results all the time. The fact that you can make this adjustment in a couple of seconds, that is just gold to me. If in this case, this bride had said to me, I love this photo, I just think that I want to look a little bit slimmer in it, then I'd just do one slide of that, I'd export it, and she'd have the image back in a few minutes. It really is as simple as that. So perhaps in your case, you take a photo of yourself and you'd have a play around, oh, I wonder what I'd look like as a man if I put on a few pounds of muscle and I'd be sliding this that way. Um, or whatever the case is, I think it's really fun. In a professional situation, this is a massive time saver for me anyway. All right, so the next use case scenario, this could be viewed as just like a bit of a fun thing. I'm gonna call it, how would I look? Uh, in certain situations, obviously, it's just gonna be like a fun edit that you can do to yourself, very similar to what, I guess, iPhone apps do these days. In a professional situation, this again could save you a lot of time when trying to edit features of your face. Just to show you quickly what I mean, I'm just gonna use this image of me taken about, literally about 10 years ago. I don't know why I've pulled this one up, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So just if I wanted to know, hmm, I wonder if I had blue eyes, what would that look like? I'd come into the Face AI panel under Portrait and under Iris, I'd click on blue and bang, there you go. I'm just gonna do it before and after and you can see what this software has done. Let's change the eye color again to gray and to, oh, cat cat eyes right okay so there you go that's just like a bit of a fun thing but perhaps if you're taking photos of a model and they wanted to have a different color eye then you could do this and this would kind of thing again in Photoshop that would take a lot of skill and time to be able to do something like that so Luminar AI just makes these edits really really simple I'm just gonna do one more for you um, go back to my catalog and this picture of Alyssa which was also taken in about 2011 she's gonna hate me using this um, but just to show you some really quick edits, let's do slim face. I'm allowed to do this because she's my wife. <laughs> um, face light, I showed you that one before. And changing eyes. And just as a kind of real world situation, she did ask the other day about lip. I think it's called lip tattooing where they give you a color on your lip, it's like a permanent thing. So what I could have done there is come into here and uh, go into lips redness and you can have a play around there. Let's just have a zoom into the lip so you can see. Um, I could have adjusted the redness there and said, oh, what do you think about this color or this color? Uh, I could have done the darkening there and saturation doesn't really do much, but when you do it in conjunction with this, I guess it goes crazy. Um, so there you go. That's like a fun tool in certain situations or it could be used as a professional tool in others. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons of the software. Starting off with the pros, and this is the biggest thing for me, and I know a lot of users will be really happy with this, and that's speed, particularly how fast Luminar AI is now. Now, I used the first iteration of it, and I have to say it was pretty sluggish. Also, Luminar 4, it does require a little bit of a speed boost, in my opinion, but with Luminar AI, things fly. Now, just to show you the computer that I am using here, it is a 2020 MacBook Air, not even the Pro. It's the M1 chip and it's got 16 gigabytes of memory. So obviously you could be using a computer that's way more powerful than this one and experience even more speed than you have been seeing today in this video. But just from clicking in between the catalog, templates, edit, export, these panels, if you've ever used Lightroom, you'll know how painful it is clicking from the library module to the develop module to the print module, etc. There are seconds of delays, especially when you have a lot of photos in here. So I'm really happy to see that all these things are super responsive. Clicking on the various looks and the templates, they, um, they occur almost immediately. I'm just gonna show you one more time when you do bring in a folder of photos. Actually, before I do this, I'm gonna just show you on my computer how big the folder is. It's 6.7 gigabytes um, worth of 133 images. So if we just get out of here and import it into Luminar AI and just count one, 
to uh, well it's around one second maybe even less i was a bit quick there but um, to import 6.7 gigabytes of data so as you can see how quickly it comes into luminar ai and everything's ready for you to start editing and as soon as you click on one of these images luminar ai starts processing it and then when you go into templates it's ready to suggest this for this photo template feature so it's already identified what's in the scene this is pretty amazing it says a animal friends there and sure enough we've got my little boy and his friend this animal so just going back to the original pro speed this software is seriously fast and i'm really impressed and i think you're going to love it all right, so the next huge pro, and this one kind of goes without saying because it's sort of the raison d'etre of Luminar AI, and that's making super complex edits really, really simple. Now, I'm not gonna go too much into this because this is what I've been doing by showing you all those use case scenarios. But essentially, anything that you can do in Photoshop can be done in Luminar AI, but just very quickly and very easily, and by someone who's never used photo editing software before. As you've seen, I've been able to, you know, relight scenes completely, relight faces, add in things that weren't there before, like this the reflection of a sky edits like this would take hours in photoshop and i don't even think many people would be able to do them as realistically as this so you can have a lot of fun with this software by adding in things let's just see this is some of the talented work of the luminar photographers what they've been doing to images in a couple of seconds these are the befores there and that's an after of one of them that's an after of another one adding in these elements like the birds and the sky reflection just takes a couple of seconds and if i just do one with you really quickly here go to JPEG samples and into this photo here something that I saw that was pretty cool that you could do is add in a moon background let's just see if I can do this while I'm talking to you so there's the moon and we can click on place object move it around it identifies the foreground and the background in the image so you can put it behind here and then I can just do this I can add some warmth to it I can reduce the opacity and my point is all these things are so easy to do for an absolute beginner like I suck at photo manipulation I'm all right at photo editing but doing things like composites like this I'm really bad at but if I just apply that now place object you can see that that took me all of what you know a couple of seconds to do so that is a huge pro of Luminar AI. I wouldn't say there are things in Luminar AI that you flat out can't do in other software like Photoshop. It's more a case of Luminar AI makes it way easier for you and much faster. Um, in terms of ease of use, I'll come into that in the next pro, but just the way things are labeled is just very user friendly. And uh, well, let's discuss that now actually. All right, so as I was saying, the next pro is ease of use, how simple this software is to use, especially because there is virtually no learning curve. Now, as at the top here, you can see there's catalog, templates, edit, and export. And there's a, this like slight arrow here just to show you the workflow. This is the intended workflow. You can, of course, skip one of these. You can go from catalog straight to edit if you know what you're doing, or you can use template. Anyway, there's just four steps, or sometimes three, to get your photos uh, in and out of the software. Now, coupled with the ease of use, something that I find particularly great for beginners is just how easy it is to get photos into Luminar AI. Now, you might think that that's something that most photo editing software does well, but if you've ever used Lightroom, you'll know that it's actually really confusing importing photos into the software. You have to decide whether you're going to move them or copy them, and there's another couple of options that I can't remember, but the fact is getting photos into Lightroom is a pain. And another thing that Lightroom doesn't do well, and I know another few softwares that don't do this very well, is the actual hierarchy or rather the folder structure once you're in the software based on what is on your computer. Now, what I mean by this is if you have a folder elsewhere on your computer that contains images and you were to move those images from that folder to another folder, then Lightroom or another photo software would give you a warning symbol and it would say something like missing photo. Now, with Luminar AI, that's not the case. And you've got lots of options of getting photos into these folders. You can add them here. Um, you can add them up here with a plus symbol. You can right click here, import images to the folders. But the key thing is any changes that you make outside of Luminar AI on your computer to those images, any changes in the location, I should say, are reflected within the software almost immediately. So just as an example, if I go to this raw Japan samples and I go ahead and delete all of them, 
from my hard drive and then I come back in here and then I go to my raw Japan samples folder you'll see that there's zero in there but if I were to come back here and then undo that and give it a bit of time and it pulls them all back in here now Lightroom doesn't do this it just shows a missing images uh, icon and it makes it very confusing because you don't know exactly what it has in Lightroom what it has outside of Lightroom etc and similarly if I were to drag some of these images into another folder then that would be reflected in this folder structure here so that goes hand in hand with ease of use Overall though, Luminar AI is a very simple piece of software to use. They've given you just the right amount of options in my opinion to not overwhelm you. You've still got things in the edit panel, which I'll go into later for more experienced users. The export panel is similarly very simple as well, but overall it's a simple piece of software to use. There's virtually no learning curve and I think it's ideal for beginners. So on to another pro, and that's the compatibility of Luminar AI. Now the program's compatible with Windows and Mac operating systems, but what I mean by compatibility in this case is that on your purchase of Luminar AI, you'll also get a plugin for Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, and even Photos for Mac OS. Now what that means is that if you're already using one of those three editing software, then you can be editing a photo, for example, in Lightroom Classic, and then choose the edit in command, and then choose L Luminar AI, and actually use Luminar AI to edit that photo and use all the powerful AI tools or do whatever you want to it. And then you can save it and get it straight back into your Lightroom workflow where all those edits will be applied to that image. And you can do that as many times as you want until you get the look that you're after. So this is really useful if you're a Lightroom, Photoshop or even Photos for Mac OS user ingrained in that ecosystem. You can use Luminar AI in conjunction with them to achieve your final result. All right, now let's talk about another important pro of Luminar AI, and that's the pricing. And I really do think that Skylum has hit a sweet spot here with its pricing of this incredible software. Now, what I mean by this is that you buy the software once and you buy it outright. It's not like Adobe where it's a subscription model. A few of the other photo editing softwares, um, they're also a subscription model whereby you pay each month. It's not like that. You pay once and you get the software and you own it forever. So there's a few options here, depending on when you look at this, it may have changed but roughly speaking you can have the master license which is $79 US dollars there's an expert license for $148 and that includes Aurora HDR which is a great HDR editing software that might be interesting for some of you and in this case you get another free pack of skies and as I said before depending on when you're watching this that may have changed already and then you've got the guru level which is 207 US dollars which includes Luminar AI, Aurora HDR, Luminar X membership which you can read more about on the site and in this case they're giving you some more free skies for your um, sky replacements as well so as I was saying before I think this is a sweet spot you can get a really powerful software for around $79 if you intend to use it on two different computers which in most cases that be true if you've got a laptop and a desktop then it's only another $20 extra so I really recommend that you go for this master one even though they're recommending this expert one unless you really need to edit HDR photos then I'd say uh, go for this one which is 99 US dollars and you're getting a free enchanting twilight skies pack here if you click the link in the description below and use the coupon code shockkit at checkout you'll get another discount so this makes it a really sweet purchase and I think it's great value for money now onto another big pro of Luminar AI. Now although I think that Luminar AI is great for beginners or for people who haven't had any experience in editing a photo before, there are also some editing features here that are perfect for professionals like myself or for anyone who wants to experiment a bit more with the editing tools. Now if you see on the right here we've got all these essential tools then you've got the creative ones which include the AI ones. Down at the bottom you've got some of the professional tools here which include um, auto distortion corrections, removing of chromatic aberrations and that kind of thing. There are also some other ones here that you can have an experiment and a play around with. But the key thing here is whatever you apply, when you start to apply these features, there is a little symbol that appears here, a little pen symbol, where you can add a mask. And what that means is you can paint in areas of the photo to exclude or to include in the rest of the edits. And what that allows you to do is to go really granular with your editing as you probably would do in Lightroom or another photo editing software. And it allows professionals like myself to get a bit more hands-on with the editing experience. So I really like that.
Okay, so on to the final huge benefit of using this software, and that is the fun factor. Luminar AI is seriously a fun software to use. Whether you're adding in fake skies to your holiday photos or tweaking around with the faces of all your friends or even using it for professional photography work as I've shown in this review, Luminar AI is genuinely really enjoyable. It's dead simple to use and the special effects will put a smile on your face every time you try them and having a software do all the hard editing work for you is like a breath of fresh air, especially if you're used to spending hours doing it all by yourself. Luminar AI can get the work done for you in seconds, but where I think you'll really enjoy using it is just for those times you want to load a photo up and have a play around. Doing crazy things to your images with just a few mouse clicks is a lot of fun, and I genuinely think you'll love using Luminar AI. Okay, so as I said at the start of this Luminar AI review, I'm not sponsored by Skylim, which means I can say whatever I want. So here are the things you may not like about Luminar AI, or at least you do need to be aware of. Number one, the lack of export options. Now there's save to disk, mail messages, smug mug and 500px, but there's very little in the way of specific settings. There's no renaming of multiple files, for example, or adding of metadata or watermarking. There's also no export preset options like there are in Lightroom and several other editing software. Number two, there aren't any keywording or tagging options for keeping track of your photos. Now, if you have a huge image library of thousands of images, folders and albums in Luminar AI are the only real way of organizing everything. Number three, Luminar AI doesn't let you use layers when editing. Now, Lightroom doesn't either, so this mightn't be a big deal for most people, but Luminar 4, Skylim's other main software, does offer layer-based editing, so it's kind of disappointing not to see it in Luminar AI. While we're on the topic of Luminar 4, the next disappointment for many existing Luminar 4 users was the lack of an upgrade discount, which is a little bit stingy on the part of Skylim, I think. Now number five, and the final con and a source of some confusion when buying Luminar AI is that Luminar AI didn't inherit all the features of Luminar 4, notably layer-based editing. It's also unclear what will actually happen to Luminar 4, but I do have a sneaky suspicion that soon all that will exist is Luminar AI, and all the features from Luminar 4 will be rolled into Luminar AI before Luminar 4 ceases to exist. All right, so you've heard all the pros and cons of Luminar AI and seen how you could use it, but is Luminar AI right for you? Well, yes and no. Do you want a fun software for playing around with your images without having to spend ages learning how to use it? Then it's a definite yes, Luminar AI is right for you. Are you an existing Lightroom or Apple Photos user who wants to extend its image editing capabilities with a bit of AI magic? Again, yes, Luminar AI and its plugin would be perfect for you. However, if you're looking for an all singing, all dancing image editor with powerful editing features, pro grade color control, metadata, keywording, layer based editing, basically the whole shebang, then Luminar AI definitely isn't for you. And you should probably check out my guide to other image editors in the links below to find something more suitable. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.